Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk. Mm -hmm. We got lots of cool stuff tonight. 89. 89? It's Tech Talk number 89? <laughs> yeah. Oh, flash the 89. <laughs> there it is. Jeez. Whee! Next time would be 90. I hear 2D graphics are all the rage right now. Really? Yeah. Oh. Didn't you like our 89? Oh, no. Well, there's 90. Okay. Oh, cool. oh okay. Time machine. That's right. Anyway, <laughs> if you've got a question for us about your home voiceover studio or some audio question that has to do with voiceover, Throw it in the chat room right now because we'll be happy to answer it. We've got a couple people wrote in this week. So we have a couple of pre-written questions and they go first in the queue. That's the way to do it. But we got lots of stuff to cover. You've got stuff in your tech update. Yeah, how about talking about a couple of new audio interfaces and you know, uh maybe a little bit about a mic I heard about that some people are liking. A little bit about soundproofing and a little thing about audacity. We're going to cover a lot of stuff. All right. And I'm going to talk about dropouts. Well, we'll both talk about dropouts. Yeah. yeah. And we're not talking high school. Anyway, it's VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk right now. Tech Talk. Brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, the makers of Source Connect, VoiceOver Heroes, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website doesn't have to be a pain in the butt, VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success, and World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Where we talk tech. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's... Been an interesting uh, couple of weeks with the car accident. Finally, getting my new car eventually. Yeah, and uh, and while we're talking, I'm probably in Morocco. That's right. When this is yeah. airing, yeah, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. going to be in Morocco. I'm going to the, uh, the Canary Islands, and amazing Spain, and a couple of other cool places. And uh, but someone will be here at the house all the time with a fire hose with with, with, <laughs> yeah, with a taser. <laughs> With a don't even a think about it. Yeah. <laughs> I, both my kids will be here. You don't want to deal with them. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're here to talk about home voiceover studio technology, which is really shouldn't be so technological. Mysterious. It should be simple, and all you really want to be is a voice actor. But there's so much stuff out there, yeah. so much technology that makes it so much easier if you know how to use and it. And there's also a lot more demands on the voice actor now, technologically, thanks to a little thing called the pandemic. That's true. So there's a lot more expectations. You, you, you got to know what you're doing, but it's not rocket science. It's logical and it's simple, and there's lots of tools to help you out. Mm -hmm. So why don't we go into, well, first we have to tell people what we do. Yes, we do. Which is, we work with home voiceover studios. This is a... A very, very unique niche place yeah. because everybody who's a voice actor has to have one. Mm -hmm. It used to be used to, you know, here in L.A., people would just go to their, uh, you know, their agent's office and there'd right. be a booth there and they would record there and or they would get hired for a gig that way. And then they would go into somebody's studio. Mm -hmm. But not anymore. You got to have a good home studio that sounds Right. Yeah, there's no such thing as audition sound quality anymore. Is this good enough for auditions? Yeah, we no. still get. I still Unless get you're, that. If you're a name actor, yeah, you can get away with that. That's true. Like, but if if you're a workaday voice actor, you're not. You're not. You know, in the hundred thousand followers on Instagram Club, et cetera, et cetera, you you have to provide the audio that the client is expecting to hear on the finished product right. every time. So, what does it take to get there? To get your audio there? We well, know how. well, we know how, and that's what George and I do because we've worked with thousands of people, literally. When we started, it was hundreds. Mm -hmm. Over the 
the 12 years that we've been doing this show, 11 I, and a half, Well, I would say years, between us, it's way over 5,000 at this point. <laughs> yeah, most, most likely. <laughs> way over. Yeah, and the great thing about that is, is we learn an awful lot. I mean, if, you, yeah. if you're not learning, you're not living. Mm-hmm. So we've learned a tremendous amount about every different possible room and mic and all these different when you things. You hire us, you're getting this condensed down, filtered, concentrated, <laughs> injected version of knowledge that is, uh, you know, an accumulation of things that we've, that we know works. That's right. Right? Not experiments, things that we know really works. And we'll talk about some of them. So mm-hmm. if, if you need to work with somebody who actually knows what they're doing, as opposed to, I have a voiceover friend who, who uses Pro Tools and he uses all this stuff. Mm-hmm. If you want to learn how to do it right, you can work with one of us. And mm-hmm. if you want to work with George, you go over to? GeorgeThe.Tech. I mean, it's right there. There's a new website coming out in the next mm, a couple of weeks. I remember listening to Dan talk about his new website's coming any day. And it's That's there. how I feel right now. I'm <laughs> New website's coming. Uh, but uh, it's still currently available to book uh, on-demand services. Um, you can just do a sound check. I mean, that's probably what almost everybody really actually needs the first time. Do I sound any good? Am I bookable? Um But Dan does a very similar thing over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. And uh, now you go there. The first thing you're going to see is my specimen collection cup, Mm -hmm. where you can get front and center because it's one of the most important things. Right. And you can get my analysis of your audio, and I will listen to it. And within five seconds, this guy, he knows how to whistle. That's right. He what? knows what it's supposed to sound oh, like. <laughs> There's a way it's supposed to sound, and that's what I do. And I will give you a very thorough report and analysis on what it sounds like. And is it on the mark or off the mark? And yeah. what are some minor changes you can make to get it sounding better? Because it's usually not something major. Yeah. Unless, of course, they're talking through their laptop mic, thinking that they're talking through their microphone. Mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. happens occasionally. Right, right. But anyway, so that's what we do. Check us out. We're the guys that you need to talk to when it comes to home voiceover studios. Everybody else says they're an expert. We've been there, done that. So been there, done that. That's been right. Day. So anyway, let's get into George's tech update because you've got lots of stuff on there today. Yeah, I mean, some weeks there's just nothing interesting new happening. And right now there's several things coming along. You know, I... Product reviews, I've been doing a lot less of those lately because, honestly, to be completely frank, they ain't worth doing that much. It's very time-consuming. There's really, you know, you're putting, if if you're trying to be a YouTuber, forget it. I'm not even interested. I, But there are things that they just come across my, they come across the bow. Mm-hmm. And I just like, woo. Um, and one of those is a, a new interface that I, can't remember who mentioned it first. It might have been Byron Wagner. He's a big fan of Lewitt. Um, and it's called the Lewitt. They make the microphones. Right. Um, Lewitt Connect 6, spelled the correct way. C-O-N-N-E-E-C-T. Not to be confused with the one that starts with K, uh, made by TC. Um, and this is an interface that is, eh, let's just put it this way. It is not what the average voice actor probably needs, but it is something for people that, want more flexibility in how they route audio, um, the ability to do a little bit beyond just standard voice work and maybe uh, work real time, do more live stuff, live stream, and certainly podcasting. Podcasting, for this, sure. This is, this is a really amazing tool for that because it's just, it's a great amalgamation of parts, hardware, high gain mic preamp, so you can use any mic with it, um, great signal routing, and it's made by Lewitt, which has a really good pedigree for quality, yeah. I would say. Their mics are really quiet. That's what they're known for. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, um, anyway, it's called the Lewitt Connect. Um, Sue, you may have, uh, Sue may have already thrown it on screen, but she's got the website up right now. Oh, no, she's got the website for uh, the M game. Oh, there it is. Thank you. That's what it looks like. It's kind of wild looking. Um, mm-hmm. Go to the next photo in that little carousel, Sue. It shows a little bit more of a feature of the unit itself. Yeah, that that is really what it looks like. I mean, it look, all right. <laughs> somebody said, hey, you know what? This thing's going to be cool because I can put little figurines on all those little platforms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a crazy-looking piece of industrial engineering. 
But um, what makes it good is the quality of the parts and the preamps and the, the signal routing. Not, not to be outdone. Meanwhile, there's the whole gamer side of everything. And M-Audio now has M-Game. So they are doing M-Audio. M-Audio is taking their technology to the gamers. So I know I'm still going a little off, off course from voiceover. But at the end of the day, a lot of the things that gamers and everybody else needs is really what we still actually need, which is being able to have a loop back, mm -hmm. um, being able to play back something, things like that. The M game RGB dual can do all that stuff. Now, here's the thing. If you're a gamer, you're going to go bananas for this thing. Not being a gamer, if you're, it's, it's a pomegranate. If you're a, if you're a voice actor from theater of a certain age, you're going to be like, <laughs> this thing is insane. But I'll tell you, when I went through and looked at the M gamers, uh, M games feature set, I was like, holy cow. And again, the price, the stu there's like a $300 price point that they're nailing with these products. I mean, the M Gamer Dual is called Dual because it will plug into two separate PCs or a Mac and a PC simultaneously. Oh, so amazing. if you have your like production system yeah. and your communication system, you have two completely independent systems that won't interfere with each other and they all route through the interface. Um, it's really, really fascinating. And they call it the RGB. In true gamer style, every single LED on the interface is color changeable. So you can um, completely customize the lighting on the thing. All right. I mean, you know, if you know, you know, right? Some of you are going to be like going nuts for this thing. I, I can't vouch for the purity of its sound quality yet. Okay. M-Audio is not known for bad gear, but they're known really for very kind of budget stuff. Yeah. So I'm curious to see, yeah, what yeah. the what the noise floor of it and things like that is. There's precious little reviews on this thing because they're shoving it into the gamer sphere. So there's not a lot of like pro audio people, well, none, talking about it. So that's why I'm talking about it here. So if anybody's interested in getting one and is dares to buy one uh, and rents one for a while, <laughs> wants to let us know what they think, let us know. Um, another thing that came, uh, up, it's interesting is the, uh, oh, I just also want to say, I mentioned the connect six connect six is not the TC connect that's been around for many years. So don't get them confused. Okay. Um, next up Vanguard microphones. We've had one in the studio at one time. We got they to make go great. I have all their t-shirts, <laughs> all their shirts. So do I, I think, um, they're a great, very locally run microphone company, small company, um, which is kind of nice because they don't try to make one of everything, right? And they've got uh, their tube mic. Now, we talk, and I talk, I will say personally, against using tube a lot. However, um, if you really are just kind of, you've, you've been using condenser mics for many years and you just want to dip your toe, this is a, probably a really great entry point in owning a tube microphone. It's way under the thousand dollar price point. Way under. I think it's in the seven hundred dollar price point. Why would someone want to use? And when we're talking about a tube, we're not talking about a microphone that that's shaped like, like a tube. A tube right. We're talking about a. It, it literally has a, 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 an electrical tube in it. Yeah, you've got a couple over. Well, Dan has a whole collection of things <laughs> with tubes in them over here. Um, a tube. A tube is a different way to power the microphone's electronics, and it actually, in a weird way, provides some degree of distortion. It's not as clinically accurate or flat as a FET or solid state condenser. Um, so they tend to have a little more character. Anyway, uh, David K, Scott, Scott Rummel's had one for years. Um, Chris Fry's has one. David K just recently got one because his 67, <laughs> Now, he has a Peluso P67, and he nice has mic. a Neumann U67. Also which, a nice mic. Which is a really, really nice, expensive mic. The, these vintage mics, even these more modern takes on vintage mics, they're a little persnickety. And again, this is why I'm like saying that most people don't go tube. Well, anyway, he got one in there, and he sent me some files. He said, how does this, you know, how, are we going to have to retune everything? Does this sound a lot different from the U67? And I got to say, it's stacked up really, really nicely against the a, a, a mic that costs 10 times as much. Wow. Um, so if, if you want something that has a little color, a little something different, and you don't want to break the bank, the Vanguard V13 might be a way to go. It's pretty impressive. Cool. Um, 
Moving on to soundproofing. Uh, one Something of my, we talk about an awful lot. Yeah, we talk a lot about acoustics and soundproofing. Uh, one of my uh, studio build project clients right now, Jessica Taylor, sent me a random email out of the blue. And her studio is practically finished, but she sent me an email about a thing that would go inside the walls of the studio that she's already finished. But obviously somebody told her about Homosoat. Homosoat is a product developed in Canada that is essentially like a sound, it's, it's, they generically call it soundboard. Oh. And the, the problem with Homosoat, to stop noise, to stop noise you right? Need density. You need density. You need air and you need density, right? Homosote is this middle ground material. It's nowhere near as dense as drywall. It's not foam. It's not insulation. It's kind of like this middle ground. And from all the research I've done on this stuff, everybody says pound for pound, dollar for dollar, another layer of drywall, which is considerably less expensive than a sheet of homosote, is a far better sound uh a sound uh soundproofing product right so your mileage may vary i know some companies are using homosote as part of the construction of their product and it may in in proper use help but if you're looking to soundproof and all you do is put up a layer of homosote you're not going to get out of that yeah. what you think you're going to get out of it it's not it's not really up to snuff yeah i've tried the new audacity oh did you i uploaded it yeah I downloaded it i just threw it on my computer because they finally have a 3.2.1. Yes. Which fixes All the a other, lot the, of bugs. Yeah. 3.2.0 was, was, was pretty buggy. Uh, but 3.2.1 come, came, came out. Did you mess around with the effects thing? No. Yeah. I don't use a lot of those effects. <laughs> right. Everything sounds good the way it just goes in You've and goes onto the studio. hard drive. It's soundproof in That's here. Right. It's got quiet ventilation. It's got all the good stuff. Well, Audacity 3.2.1 has a real-time effects feature now, which is kind of funny because all of its competition has had all this for many, many years. They finally decided they would put it in. It means that you can now have effects stacked or racked on a track, and you can hear those while you're playing the audio. So which, you can audition it, as yes, we Yes, so you can hear it in real time, which for me as an engineer, <sighs> thank you. <laughs> the most frustrating thing about Audacity and its macro technology, which... As it's macros are fine. It's great that you can sequence in a bunch of different things, but you can't pro, you can't listen to them in real time. So with with the real time effects, you can insert you know a little a little high pass filter. You could have a little two to one compressor if you need, or you know a little EQ, and you can actually hear what they're doing while they're actually doing it. You can right. audition them real time. But these these are things that an engineer would worry about somebody who is not physically doing the voice yeah. acting because if you're yeah. concentrating on the technology while you're recording yeah when i say real time something. i let me qualify that please <laughs> you are not listening to this processing in your headphones oh good okay <laughs> it is not it's not true real time it's not zero latency it's not like you're going to hear this amazing bass heavy sound and this bigger than life compression no, you're not going to be monitoring through it. That's a, that is a key thing to mention. It is really just allowing you to hit play and immediately hear that little bit of processing, and you can tune it and tweak it, things like that. So anyway, that's what's new in, in Audacity. Um, I haven't personally put 3.2.1 through the ringer yet. I've still been kind of like cautious saying stick with 3.1.3 because um, I know that one works great and stable. So... If you want to try out both, you can. You can actually keep an old version. Just rename it, which is exactly what I just did on my computer. I renamed the old version. I called it Audacity, Audacity 313. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I have the new one installed as well. And you don't have to lose your old version. You can keep keep the old one until you're feeling really confident about it. Yeah. I'm actually yeah. pretty impressed. They they changed the, the interface a little bit. You know, so things are a little bit easier to, to follow. We can actually show that. I, I, Sue has a video, just two minutes long. Go for and it. And it's a demo of Audacity from Audacity. Hi, my name is Martin Kiri, and in this video, I'm going to take you through the major new features we've introduced in Audacity 3.2. For those who use Audacity for audio production, such as podcasters or voiceover artists, we're proud to announce that Audacity now supports real-time effects for VST, audio units, LV2, and LADSPA. 
For those not familiar with the power of real-time effects, let me explain. In previous versions, if you applied an effect to a track, it would alter the audio in a way that couldn't be modified later. So if you were unhappy with the effect you applied and wanted to change it, you'd need to keep undoing until it was removed and then reapply the effect again. This limited Audacity's effectiveness for larger projects containing multiple tracks, where it's only natural to need to tweak the effects throughout the production process. But now, with real-time effects, you can make changes at any point. To apply them, simply select this Effects button, which opens a sidebar that lets you specify the effects you want to use. And if you want to add effects to a different track, just select it and the sidebar will update accordingly. Using this sidebar, you can rearrange effects, mute them or remove them at any point in your project. And if you're new to the world of real-time effects, check out this option called Get More Effects, which will take you to our new online manual, where we've provided links to some of the most popular free plugins. All you'll need to do is install them, and then they'll appear in this list. In combination with non-destructive editing, which we included in our last release, Audacity is now a highly capable and powerful audio production tool. Apart from real-time effects, you'll notice we've also done some work to tidy up the interface too. Many of the audio settings which were displayed in these dropdowns have been combined into one audio settings button, and we've combined these four components for metering and volume settings into two smarter components that take up far less space. And if you look closely, you'll see another new feature that we're proud to introduce to Audacity, the ability to share your audio files for free using our new online service, audio.com. This feature allows you to quickly export and share your audio using a special link. With these new capabilities, Audacity can now be your one-stop solution for recording audio, polishing projects and sharing your work with others. And we're only just getting started. There are many more major improvements coming to Audacity very soon. And if you want to stay notified about what's coming next, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks very much and take care. And we're back. For those here watching live, you didn't get to hear the audio, but those watching the, the, the edited version, thanks to Dan, will hear the audio on that little, on that little reel. But you'll got to at least totally see the, the new interface right. of Audacity. Yeah. So um, lastly, um, I know Apple is announcing new stuff this month. Everybody is anticipating it. And I don't care. You don't care? <laughs> and here's why. The stuff they launched two years ago, to mm -hmm. me, is still friggin' fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm M1 Mac from two years ago, which is now what I'm running in my studio, the 2020, late 2020 M1 MacBook Air, and and that's what we have on Dan's desk right here. And then the the, the Mac Mini M1 are fantastic. They work like, great. They are fantastic. I there are, there are new things coming all the time. The M2 is coming, right, et cetera, et cetera. It's kind of like, you know, saying, well, I, I, my car has 400 horsepower, but the new one's got 480. Who effing cares? Like, <laughs> unless you are a total car, car guy who has to show up at Cars and Coffee with the newest, fastest thing. And to me, that's what these new computers are going to be. They're going to be incremental upgrades from what came out last year. And so I'm really not, I don't, really don't care. Then they're going to all have a new OS called Ventura. And that's going to be a new problem to deal with. <laughs> so, because it's a takes new them like OS. six months to, to get all the bugs. All the bugs, right? all the manufacturers have blah, blah, blah. So, uh, honestly, if you're thinking about buying a new Mac, unless you're going to be doing heavy duty video production work and need the latest, fastest everything, which mm -hmm. most of you don't need, um, you're going to be quite happy with what's currently on the market. And really, you want to be on Monterey. That's the OS you want to be on. Like, if you've been thinking about upgrading to Monterey, like you've been waiting because we keep telling you not to, now is a pretty good time. If your system is, you know that all your software and everything's compatible, now is a safe time to go to Monterey. It's pretty well fully baked, and it won't have too many more updates. So, anyway, there you have it. All right. Dan? Yeah? Let's talk dropout. Drop. Uh, drop. No, a dropout. <laughs> I, I get a lot of emails from people, and they're sending uh, me their audio, and got, I'm getting all these thumps. And now sometimes it could be, well, it's you're you're exhaling when you're talking, uh -huh. and you get a thump out of your nose. Oh, but a nasal no. thump. Yeah, yes. yeah. But no, we're talking about digital thumps mm -hmm. and digital dropouts, and what those usually are is. A lot of different things, and 
they can be caused by different things, but it's the recording of the audio not keeping up with the stream of audio. And when that happens, you will get, <clears throat> and it's easy to see. You'll one, you'll hear it because it'll go thump, and sometimes it'll be thump 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 thump, and sometimes it might be one here, one there. But whenever oh. it happens, people are like, "What's causing that?" And it could be a number of things. It's usually not an analog problem. It is generally never an analog problem. It right, is a. Right. It's not it, something that you're. If you're listening to your mic while you, recording, you're not going to hear. It. You're not going to hear. It's something it. that's on the hard drive, and that's one of the reasons you might yeah. get it. Like it used to be a real big problem <laughs> when everyone was using mechanical hard drives, which was everybody until four or five, five years, years ago, ago right? Yeah. Until they came out with SSDs, but solid state drives. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys all know that flash drives. Yeah, and. Those generally, you wouldn't think that you would get dropouts from that. Uh, but if originally they still it was, creep up though, huh? Yeah, they, they a lot, and 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 I've been troubleshooting a lot of them the last couple of weeks. Now, is there any one platform or system or hardware or anything that's doing it more than anything else? PCs and Windows. <laughs> I was leading you down the primrose. Path. <laughs> you knew where I was going with that. <laughs> I, I had one yesterday, someone who was uh, a, a good client of mine. She's like, I've been doing this, and all of a sudden I'm getting it. And, and mm. she had changed interfaces and changed mics. That's and the I'm worst like, when you hear, oh, they've changed a million things. And I'm right. And I'm like, you know, there's a really simple answer to this. What, what computer are you? Oh, I'm using a PC. And when did the problem start? Did she say it started like a week ago, a month ago, or it's been happening It's forever? been happening off and on for a while. Okay. So I'm like, get it. I know you don't want me to, you don't want to hear this, but get a Mac. Yeah. And then she writes back, yeah, my husband's been telling me that. I'm like, okay. well, great minds think alike. Got herself a, a MacBook Air. Problem solved. She got over the learning curve. Okay. Keeping I, her some I, I, I imagine she's actually had a Mac or used yeah. a Mac before, but, yeah. but that solved the problem. It's. PCs yeah. are a real problem because they're not really designed for recording audio. The Macs have a, a core audio system to them, which yeah. is, is it's much more integrated into how the computer works. Yeah, yeah. And that's why you can do plug it's and literally play at stuff. The core. <laughs> it's literally at the core, core of the design of the Apple. It's, it's about c capturing audio and video reliably right. and having everything work together. It's... It just is. I've, I've never had a dropout with a Mac. Windows 11 hasn't changed that. You know, Windows 10 is basically Windows. Windows 11 is basically Windows 10 under kind of on the inside, just right. with a new Mac kind of OS, a little bit looking, right. you know, interface to it. But it's still yeah. just Windows. The problem is, is that PCs, because they're they're modular and the way they're put together, and you can mix and match, you know, cards and you know, and the SATA drives yeah. and all this other. There's a lot going on inside your computer. And Do you know PC, what an IRQ is? What? Do you know what an IRQ is? Uh, it's, it's an interrupt thing. An interrupt request something something. Wow, I actually remembered that. <laughs> I'm impressed with myself. IRQs. They actually still exist. They just don't see them in the way that we used to. Right. But they can still create conflicts. And um the way the sound drivers and Windows environments work, they don't multitask very well. Right. If you have to do Zoom while you're using Adobe Audition or Audacity, chances are you're, you're going to have conflicts right. of drivers and on right. and on yeah. and on. Right. But there's another thing that can cause it. Yeah. And that is using a long daisy-chained USB cable. That's right. I somebody a was bad having USB cable. She had the wires running underneath the floor. And then oh. there was one hub. She had plugged it into one hub. Yeah. It went through the floor and then went to another hub yeah. before it went into the computer. And yeah. I'm like, all right, let's try one long line. Yeah. Fix the problem. I have one in my bag. It's like a 20 something <laughs> foot USB. Right. And I used it at Uncle Roy's to run the, this camera, your, that, that camera over there yeah. from his stage down and over to our board. Like it was a 20 something long cable, but. Right. It was the right kind of extension. It was an active cable. Right. Yeah. And USB-C, they say you can't run them too long. I know someone that's running a 50-footer and it works fine. With, with a junction. But if you have a specialized junction for USB-C, 
you can generally run a long a Yeah, long you're run. playing with fire extending USB. That's that's why all the manufacturers, other than saving money, that's why they all conclude a little three foot long cable in the box. Yes. <laughs> that's why, because they want to guarantee that it works. And the first time there's anything like this goes wrong with dropouts, what do they tell you? Are you using mm -hmm. the factory cable? Mm -hmm. uh, no. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. watch out for that. Yes. So don't use don't get dropouts. Use a Mac. Don't daisy chain your USB cables. Yeah. If you if you, if you and, and if you're like, well, my Mac is outside because the fan noise is too loud, but I have a Scarlet. Which do I extend? Extend the XLR mic cable and put the Scarlet near the Mac or the PC, whatever it is, Mac or PC. Put that out there and ex for for whatever reason that may sound strange to you, but extending an XLR mic cable, usually no problems. Cool. Usually yeah. no problems at all. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break here, and after that, we will get to your questions. And if you have questions, yes. you still have plenty of time to throw them in the chat room so Jeff Holman can write them down for us, and we can read them and then answer them, which is what we do. Sounds pretty like simple. Like a machine, like a machine. I know. Anyway, we'll <laughs> be right back on Voice Over Body Shop, so don't go away. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Widom. VOBS.TV Headphones for voiceover? Why not get the headphones made for voiceover? That's why I use Harlan Hogan's Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0 from VoiceOverEssentials.com. Harlan's cans are incredibly strong and lightweight. At only 8.4 ounces, the combination straight coiled audio cable stretches from 5 to 10 feet. It comes with two gold-plated mini plugs and a studio standard quarter-inch screw-on adapter and includes the new mini jack on the left headphone for easy cord replacement. The studio monitoring headphones are optimized for voice work. Now even better, the Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Over Headphones 2.0. And for a limited time, when you buy the headphones, you'll also get a free autographed copy of Harlan's best-selling book, VO, Tales and Techniques of a Voiceover Actor, 2nd Edition. It's full of stories from the trenches and insights about making the most of your voiceover career. Go on over to VoiceOver Essentials right now and order yours. Well, it's time to talk about Source Elements. Source Elements. The I get to take part this time. Yeah, absolutely. Creators of Source Connect, um, a tool set that has really carried productions through the pandemic. Um, in a way that, you know, it really allowed the production workflow, the way studios like to work, to continue, essentially. Um, you know, when they all went home, when all the producers <laughs> went home, they couldn't go into the Warner Brothers and all those big studios. They, had to, they wanted to keep shows going. Everybody wants to keep working. Everybody wants to keep feeding their families, you know? Oh, yeah. So guess what? They didn't have ISDN. They didn't have a way to connect remotely to, to their talent anymore reliably. Source Connect was there. It's, it was its time. It was its We've time. We've only Holy been telling cow. people for like 15 years, you really need to have this because that's what's going to allow you to become a successful voice actor. Yeah. Because you can record remotely that. Yeah. It came into its own for sure. And it, there are, there are, we know there are a lot of competing products. We know there's a lot being used on Chrome. Um, and there's others out there trying to, to, to get into this business. The thing is, they've just been here for so long and have penetrated the market. And so many studios have it in their workflow. So anyway, if you want to get started, head over to source-elements.com and sign up and get your account started. You can get a 15-day free trial and get accustomed to it. And if you need any help, we've got great tech people. They have great tech people themselves. Yep. And if you have they more advanced sleep. needs, no, they're, they're, <laughs> they're around the world, literally <laughs> around the world at all time zones. And if you have a more complex issue with tech, obviously I'm here to help too. And we can make that happen for you. So anyway, thank you, Source Elements. Let's get on with the rest of the show. Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here, uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. 
and we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. All right, we're back here at VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. And uh, if you've got a question for us, if you're like totally intrigued and, and, and have a problem or don't really understand something about voiceover technology, now would be a really great time to type in one of the chat rooms, whether you're on mm -hmm. Facebook Live or YouTube Live or wherever it is you're watching this. Uh, you can put it in the chat room there and we will get that question in just scant moments. Absolutely. But people have written in because we told you. If you write in that. your questions, if you write to us at... Sue, the guys at VOBS.TV, uh, and you write your question, it will get to the front of the queue. So if you're watching the show, you know your question's going to come up first. That's right. So, and Tim's was the first one for tonight. Tim McKean asks, he says, my mic has an HPF, high pass filter switch, uh, setting. My digital audio workstation has multiple HPF opportunities. Is there a difference? <laughs> Is a hardware switch on the mic better than a software HPF later in the chain? Is one cleaner than the other? Oh, that's an interesting it, question, actually. It sort of depends on the mic because yeah. some high-pass filters are not the same as other high-pass filters yeah. on any one particular mic. That's right, yeah. And uh, so what's better? Whatever I, sounds good. <laughs> yeah, whatever sounds good. Sounds no. good, it is good. My philosophy is always fix everything in post. And mm -hmm. if, you, if you record something and there is a low-frequency rumble or noise down there, you can control it on the back end more precisely more precision, yeah. and not without having to, yeah. you know. You, the thing is, is when you put something on the front end, it's there forever. Right. Now, with right. that said, if you've got a really loud low frequency rumble under 80 hertz yeah the that, high pass that filter that just makes like a wave yeah all the way through your yeah. file or if you're looking at a spectrogram it's this big sort of red line across uh yeah you can you it's a process mm. if you've got a high pass filter on the mic try that first now some mics have a high pass filter that might actually take away some of the sensitivity of the entire mic yeah, and or it reduces, they take away too much of the low end. Right, and it, it'll affect the fidelity. Yeah, uh, The really good ones don't necessarily do that. They just cut off everything below 80 hertz. The human voice doesn't really exist below 80 hertz unless you're, you know, you were Don LaFontaine or... or uh, Who was that, uh, Ravenscroft? Is yeah, that his name? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're yeah. a mean one. That way, that guy. The guy, would, <laughs> guy whose voice would rumble you from 20 paces. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and and the U eighty seven is a peculiar one. It its high pass filter starts very high. Yeah. I, I d guys, don't quote me. I think it's one hundred fifty hertz that it, that it starts at. So, so women that may can't not, use that. <laughs> that may not work really well for many of you. Um, whereas, like the the Vanguard V four, which is a mic I know very well and I like, it its high pass is in eighty hertz. Um, sure, the KSM thirty twos they have two different. High pass filter modes, interestingly. They mm -hmm. have a steeper one and a more shallow one. So what's the right one to use? Whatever one sounds best. Um, and then you said your your uh, interface has one, same exact thing. More than likely it's an on-off switch. Yeah. So you're just gonna have to try them and see what you Which one find better. sounds better, you know. But I, I think the one place where an, a real-time one is really helpful is in the case of doing like a source connect. If you're doing a live session, well, yeah. you've got to cut it out. You, if you, you don't want to send that studio who's listened to you through 
$10,000 studio monitor speakers, uh, standing 40 hertz <laughs> rumble. <laughs> you know, they, they, they're going to be really a, I mean, honestly, they should know what to do. They should be, a, they should have a high pass filter at the ready, but still it's like you want to connect and sound relatively clean, you know? So that's a place where it's really nice to have. Absolutely. So yeah, a high pass filter is, you know, because I have found no matter where you are, if you are in a place of residence, there's something 80 Hertz and below. Yes. Especially at a multi-unit building. building. Right. Especially people living on the top floors of high rises where the compressors are and stuff. Yeah. My acupuncturist is on the top floor of her building and I go in there and I'm lying down. (laughs) Isn't it crazy? Like if you're in the wrong spot of a big building, I had a client who had a double wall whisper room in, in, in a commercial building. Right? right? He wanted to get away from the family, have a place to go work, da da da. Bought this very expensive whisper room, and it was in the precisely wrong place in the building. The Darn. HVAC system, standing waves just built up in that room. It mm. was, and what was worse is once you went in the whisper room, yeah. that frequency was like a natural resonant frequency of this whisper. Oops. So you shut the door, and it was even worse. <laughs> It was insane. Yeah, so watch out for that. And by the way, one last thing. A high-pass filter is also known as a low-cut filter. filter. So if you're going, wait, well, what's the low-cut? It's it's a different way of saying the same thing. A high-pass meaning that frequencies above 80 hertz or wherever it's set at will will pass through anything below. And seeing as is the human voice generally isn't below 80 hertz, no matter which one you're using, it's not going to affect your voice. It's that a much. pretty safe bet. Yeah, I know. Now, there's a very popular mic. the The Caddy 100S has a high pass filter on it. And I tried it. Yeah. It really sort of threw off the sensitivity of the mic and changed its characteristics. Too. Yeah, I think that one. Some of them had an issue where you turn it on, it would get a little noisier. Yes. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, so you got to be you got to watch out. Some mics have more than one frequency that you can choose. Right. So. <laughs> We could talk about it for a while, as you can see, but it, at the end of the day, if you're not sure, send the sample to Dan or I so we can hear what sound, you know, send us Quickly. three samples. Right. This is one with, high press wish only, the one on my interface only. Now this is one with my doll. Which sounds better? You know? Exactly. Yep. All right. Once again, if you got a question, still lots of time. You can throw it in the chat room. I'm sure you're all like totally mesmerized by our expertise <laughs> here. Anyway. You get the one from Renee here. All right. From Renee. It's a long one. (laughs) Hi there. I was wondering if you could help me. I'm currently re-recording my commercial and audiobook demo reels, and I keep running into the same issue. Sibilance. Sibilance. Um, (laughs) That sounded pretty terrible, actually. (laughs) I did a good job. Uh, My rig uh, uh, consists of Audacity 2.4.2, LMMS 1.2.2, Mm-hmm. What is that? <laughs> you were waiting for me to know what that was. I, I am. I'm, I don't know what that is. I know um, what the next thing is. A though. Tonor Q- Q9 9 USB, USB mic. Okay, so a budget USB mic. Not, not even a budget USB mic. This is, I think, when we get to the bottom of this question, <laughs> okay. that's where the issue is. But carry so. on. Um, some Sony headphones, uh, some moving blankets, and a closet. Here's the breakdown. I can record pretty clean audio that only requires a small amount of editing due to the acoustic treatment of the space. Good. Good Good on you. Um, However, my levels are on the lower side with regards to volume to avoid my sound getting clipped. So in other words, you're you're recording with lower levels to keep from peaking, I guess, right? Um, When I process or EQ and compress the audio to even out the sound, the playback is good sound-wise but the crispness causes heavy sibilance. Um, I've tried a handful of different tacks and tricks, but I end up with uh, either better volume with sibilance or high quality audio that's darn near impossible to hear. Um, Are there any other hacks or tricks I can try to prevent this from affecting my recordings and demos? Any help you can give me is greatly appreciated. Well, I'm gonna start from the reverse. Okay. I'm gonna start from here. From the headphones. All right. She mentions using Sony headphones. Now, I don't know that particular ones that she was using, mm-hmm. um, but they're not the the quote the the quintessential MDR seventy five oh sixes. But I can tell you that those are 
those headphones expose sibilance very well. Like, meaning they kind of exaggerate it. It's been my experience. So when you get a louder, cleaner, a much louder signal, you're literally monitoring yourself much, much louder. So anything that you don't like is going to be louder, louder. Yeah. right? Okay, yeah. So that might be, it could be that simple as to why the sibilance is so noticeable when you record with really good levels. Right. But why are we getting the sibilance in the first place? That's the question. Well, the, the problem I see is with the microphone she's using, which Probably. is a, a Tonor Q9 USB microphone. Now, when I hear these things and I see these when people you know, email me, yeah. I do what you always do. I Google it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd heard of this mic before, but I, I, I had to double name. check. The name's come up. It is a cheap USB microphone for $69. Oh, well under 100 bucks, huh? Well under 100 bucks. Okay, all right. It's, yeah, not only is it budget, it's it's not even good for podcasting. Okay. It's, and that, and it, they sell it with, with a, a reticulated arm. Oh, it's one of those packages. You get yeah, the yeah, arm, yeah, yeah. you get the mic, and, the cable, and the, and the a mic is screen. Yeah, the mic is terrible. And yeah, the reason yeah. you're getting sibilance is essentially, and this is from my own brain, I think it's the overmodulation of a high frequency. Mm -hmm. And and so you get the distortion and it sounds very, very sibilant. And there are lots of people say, Oh, my voice is really sibilant. So if you're talking to somebody and they say their voice is very sibilant and they're in the same room with you. Yeah, I hear any siblings. That's it's, pretty unusual. Yeah. So it's generally, it can be the mic. If the mic is, doesn't have the frequency response, if it can handle things over like 10,000 hertz, yeah. you know, 10K, uh, chances are that's where it's causing the sibilance. So if she went to a better microphone, mm -hmm. like say a Rode NT1 or an NT1A or one of the Audio Technica mics, you know, the 2035 or better. Mm -hmm. Something over $150, along with a good interface. Everybody's like, well, I don't want to have to deal with an interface. I want a USB mic. I'm like, well, you have to have a good USB mic. And a good USB mic, I mean, a really good one, generally is the same cost as getting a regular <laughs> Pretty much. good studio condenser mic yeah. with an interface. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I would say that that's generally what's going to solve the problem. It's going to, you know, it's going to stop the sibilance. It's going to stop, you know, not sounding the way it should. Yeah, now, I mean, that, yeah. that, that capsule of the microphone might have a natural resonance or right. those, would that create those extremely strong S's, right? Right, exactly. And also USB mics, another thing that's frustrating about them is is they're fiddly to adjust the settings. Yeah, you have to do it through... You either your, have to do your, it through your, a computer interface or... Or through the, the, uh, the OS. Yeah. Through, either through Or there's a tiny or, little, multi, you know, there might be knobs on the mic. There might be some funky little multi-function button knob thing. It always feels fiddly because you're going like this. <laughs> Right. <laughs> is that it? How, how's that sound? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And it's like controls on a microphone suck in any kind of directed live session on Zoom, anything. Because as soon as they say adjust your gain, that's what they hear. You know, right. so if you have a physical box where you can adjust, adjust everything, just a it's little bit. so much better for yeah. a, a professional session. Yeah. It's, you you know? really do need to have an interface, you know, a good yeah. digital. And, and the thing is, is a good digital interface doesn't cost a lot. No. Now, they're very well expensive under ones. Yeah. What's the difference between, say, a good interface and a cheaper interface? Generally, it's the preamp and how much white noise How much noise gain it has, out, right. And, and then how, much how, and then how many bells and whistles it has. Right. And yeah. do you need all the bells and whistles? All right. you need is to take your voice, the analog sound that your microphone is capturing, goes through the wire into the interface as an analog sound, and then it changes in, into the ones and zeros that your computer understands. Yep. You know, along the, with, with the preamplifier inside the... digitized the through the analog to digital converter. Right. Right. So get yourself a better mic and a good interface, and that will solve that problem. And if you can't afford those, that's what credit cards are for. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, they, they, good quality audio is affordable. Right. It, it is now, for sure. All right. Patricia Andrea... 
watching us on YouTube, says, I'm in Jacksonville, Florida, and having a hard time finding voiceover coaches. Could you recommend one virtually? Could I you could, virtually recommend one? I can virtually could say, well, well you could go to this one? person, or you could, you could virtually go to this person. <laughs> There's a lot of good coaches out there. Um, we've had them on this show. You know, Countless. Uh, Type coach VOBS. You'll see every, you'll see all, all the almost good every coach we've ever ever interviewed on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I've worked in and we've worked had to work virtually the last two years anyway. Yeah. So uh, I, I mean, mean, I'll put in a, I'll clip, put in a plug for my pal Rick Wasserman. He's very good. He does a lot remotely. Yep. My coach uh, Dave Walsh, who we've had on the show many times, he's he's got a great system and and, and way of teaching uh, how mm-hmm. to do you know your your true your true voice and and really becoming. Showing you how to become the spot, mm-hmm. and and sound like you know what you're talking about. Yeah, and I don't mean I don't want to come off as being you know L.A. Hollywood boy, but smaller markets, it's going to be a little harder to find a great coach. Right. You you might get lucky. There might be a great voice actor who's coaching in your town. It's just far less likely right. that that's going to be the case. So really, it's better off you do search farther afield i think so yeah. anyway there's some good coaches in new york yeah mm-hmm. and there's great coaches here in la and, and there's good ones in dallas right and there's good ones in miami right they're they're definitely around but you know it's going to be harder in smaller markets so yeah rick wasserman's bookable vo.com that's where he coaches and oh, and mark cashman and mark cashman at cashmancommercials.com and dave walsh voiceover coaching i think is his yeah site. i mean but, gosh go, I, I i mean i'm serious type in go go to youtube Type V O B S space coach, and you'll find every every episode we've ever done with a coach because we right. put the coach in the you know we say that they're a coach in the in the name, so you should be able to find one to right. our show. Yeah, uh, Rich Green. This is a George. Hey, question. Rich. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you could have only one plugin in your stack, what would it be? Only one plugin. One well, plug-in. I can cheat and then tell you one plugin that does everything. All right. <laughs> Do tell. Uh, wa- Waves Shep's Omni Channel. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard you mention that one before. It is literally like it's called Omni Channel because it's the one to rule them all, right? So you have that one plugin, you get everything. You get a you get a full channel strip. You get you know, preamp, compression, EQ, expander. Parametric equal, you know, all the all the bells and whistles are in one plugin. Okay, so that's kind of like a sort of a desert island plugin, which I kind of feel like it's cheating because it's really a lot of plugins. There's a lot of different things in one plugin. So I don't know if that's what you were asking, <laughs> if that's what you mean. But um, if I had literally one effect that I could use on anything, it would probably be some kind of dynamics processing. Um, yeah, I don't know. TDR Nova is one that's nice because it's free. Mm-hmm. Have you played around with that one? I don't TDR play with TDR Nova. I don't play with this stuff. <laughs> I don't need it. it everything know. sounds great coming out of my voice and into the mic. You heard it here first, folks. But, you know, um, <laughs> no, I, I, mean, I wish. But The TDR Nova um, is uh, one that a lot of people like because it is free. And uh, it has the compressor and a couple of bands of EQ, and it'll let you do DSing, which <laughs> still is an issue for some yeah. folks with no matter what microphone they have. So uh, I don't know. There's a I, few ideas. I, I tend to find that usually whatever system you're, whatever DAW you're using, has effects in it that you have complete control over. Yeah, I mean, I was going to ask you what platform because right. you know Reaper's got a whole ton of suite of them. Twisted Wave has all the audio units plugins made by Apple. Um, Adobe Audition has an incredible arrangement of included plugins. Right. So, I mean, pretty much every one of them, even Audacity, mm, the the little, you know, Audacity plugins are pretty uh, hit or miss. But but the Apple ones work great. Yeah, AU, the AU plugins are really good. Yeah. And they're not even plugins. They're just generally a standard. Well, it's your your DAW will generally say, "Well, this is what we use." Oh, it, it'll it'll yeah. just recognize. Yeah, it. Twisted Wave yeah. has it. Audacity recognizes it. Yeah. Adobe Audition, you know, of course, yeah. Adobe Audition has it has an so many good suite ones. Of tools. In yeah, it, so. whenever I use Audition, I never even I never honestly load an AU plug an Apple Audio Unit plugin because it's already there. It's, like everything's in there. Everything is everything you need. Yeah. J Horace Black. 
Yay, Jay. We can always count on Jay to give us a, a good question. Absolutely. He says, hey, George and Dan, that would be you and me. I need new ear pads for my Harlan Hogan H2 cans. Uh -huh. Can we use any replacements that are listed online, or is there a certain type that will fit them? Harlan has them, and he will replace them. Yeah, you definitely first start with Harlan. If I you liked with... the ones that were there, start there. Right. If you want to try something different, um, I'm using aftermarket ear pads on these headphones. The ear cup shape on these Audio Technicas is really similar. I haven't tried these with Harlan's, but I feel like I feel like 95% sure these would fit. Um, they're on my gear recommendation recommendations page. I can't remember what they're called. Sorry. Um, these headphones have been through the mill. I mean, mm -hmm. look at the headband. Even these are replacement, and they're getting torn up. But they're so thick and comfortable that mm -hmm. I really, really, and they have that velvet mm -hmm. coating. I find them to be really comfortable. So I'm sorry for not remembering the name, but check my gear re recommendations area. Um, but yeah, ask ask Harlan if you if you like the memory foam leather pads that their his stuff comes with, then just go right to the source. Absolutely, you know. And finally, John O'Rourke asks, I have an Audient ID14 mm -hmm. and now have a new vocal booth or VO, VO booth in my studio. Yeah. I want to record in the booth, but edit and mix in the bigger original studio. Sure. The booth is within the bigger studio. Yeah. Where should the ID14 be? Oh. I feel yeah. like it should be in the booth, but then what would be the best way to control the audio for playback? The computer is in a rack in a bigger studio. I do have a Mackie mixer and amp I can use. They are not part of the current voiceover setup, nor I should they I think we be. probably both have an answer for this. Yeah. Well, my answer is, you know, I've just, it, it comes with experience because I've been doing this so long. I know by looking at a script and knowing how, I'm, how loud I'm going to be, where to set the level initially. And my, all my stuff is... To, yeah, you're not in there twiddling with the I, team. I, I don't want to be doing that. Yeah, yeah. If, if I'm doing a lot of, uh, you know, if it's a, a, you know, if it's, if I'm doing a, a video game or something like mm -hmm. that, or I have to be loud in some places, you know, hey, get out of your car! You know, and you're like, ma'am, can I see your driver's license registration? If I've got to change, you know, my volume a little bit, I can do it physically with the mic if I'm going to yell... I can turn away from the mic because we don't yell into people's ears. Yeah, I mean, when you yell in a voiceover booth, you're not really truly yelling. Right. Unless you're doing a video game death thing. That's a different <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like most of a lot of stuff, you're not really yelling. You're right. not really whispering, you know. Right. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I agree. I, you know, I, I always tell people, don't set it and forget it. Right. Once you know a range where the gain should be, you probably have one or two... Well, I would say two or three at the yeah. most go-to settings. and conversational. Yelling and, you know, if you have it in there, just set it like that. Or if you're going to do something loud and something soft, record the soft stuff first and then yeah. do the loud stuff. So I'm going to do the opposite idea. Okay. Which is because these are both valid. If you Maybe. really do feel like you want to have that gain knob at your fingertips, mm -hmm. you don't have to have your studio monitors plugged into the uh, audience directly. Mm-hmm. Or if you do, you don't have to use the audience's own volume knob to control that. So you've got a mixer. You could run the outputs of the, of the audience through your mixer and now use that as your levels for your speakers. You can get a really simple little passive volume control box that you can stick by your speakers and have a control of its own, right? Mm -hmm. So there are a couple of ways that you could actually hand work around that. And the really, the really dirty way is you just plug your speakers with a Y, a y adapter right into your computer headphone jack and just use built-in sound for playback. Right. Uh, you might get mm, some buzz. You might get some ground loops. You know, uh, it's, just, it's not a great, not, not the best thing. Just keep it clean and straight and as little things in between as possible, and that's usually what makes the best audio. Yeah. Jeff Holman gets the last question, though. All right. Which is pretty simple. Uh, what's your favorite travel mic for using in hotel rooms? My tried and true, it just happens to be lying right here, my old Epigee mic. That's the original, right? The original. Look and at it that still thing, works great. 
all, it's it's a little tarnished, you know. It's, it's been, been it's, it's been to the it's, ring. It's been really used on the road. It's look at that sucker, man. The thing, the thing is, you know, it's been through it. It has, and I've booked work off of it, and I have recorded work with it. There and, you go, and it's and you know what's nice about this? It has an actual the, just the, actual the, physical volume game out. dial. The game dial, yes, mm-hmm. yes, but. Gotta love it. The missus does not like seeing this go into my suitcase. Oh, you have to sneak it in there. Yeah, it's it's not coming with me to Morocco. Good for you, man. Yeah, I'm <laughs> taking you. three weeks off to not do any of that stuff. <laughs> anyway, thanks yeah. for your questions, guys. And uh, you can write to us anytime at, again, Sue, the guys at vobs.tv. TV. And ask, you know, write your questions to us. If it just suddenly occurs to you in the middle of the week, oh, I got to ask Dan and George's question. That's the way to do it. But you can always uh, watch and ask if you're watching the show live. Live. So anyway, that's going to do it for us. We'll be right back after these incredibly important messages to wrap everything up. And we'll be right back. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez. And you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Everybody Shop. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, Their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is VoiceOverExtra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Alas Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voiceover Body Shop. Hey there. Hey, we're back. Almost. We took a moment to enjoy a cookie called a Dorbis. And if you can find these, they're really good. Might be tough, though. Definitely. These are made in Iran. Go figure. Anyway, my girlfriend brought them back one of her trips. And yes. uh, and I wanted to say before we go, hashtag, hashtag. Masa Amini. M-A-H-S-A-A-M-I-N-I. And if you want to know what that means, just put it into the net. And start looking at what's going on over there. My girlfriend is still uh, in Iran, and um, we want her to come back safe. But yes, she's do. there with her mother as well, so she's looking after her family. But um, we hope that things resolve there, and uh, we want freedom and peace for the people of Iran. Absolutely. Yep. And the people in Ukraine and everywhere and else. The in the, Ukraine and things are going crazy. Of course. Right. Yes, absolutely. Anyway. Uh, but we like to thank our donors of the week. We sure do. Like Robert Leadham. Stephen Chandler. Casey Clack. Jonathan Grant. Tom and Pinto. Yes, sir. Shelly, Shelly Avellino. Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice. Antland Productions. Martha Kahn. 949 Designs. Jonathan Grant. See, you did it too. <laughs> <laughs> 
I remind me to erase that. <laughs> Christopher Epperson. <laughs> Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Brian Page. Patty Gibbons. Rob Ryder. Shauna Pennington Baird. Don Griffith. Trey Mosley. Diana Birdsall. And Sandra Manwiller. See, I, I'm like I'm like, you know, Ron Burgundy. You put it on the prompter and I'm it's gonna read there. it. That's right. <laughs> Oh, my God. I yes. love that show. All right. Well, if you want to work with one of us, hey, it's real simple. If you want to work with George, you go over to George, uh, George the dot, dot tech. George the dot tech. And if you want to work with me, homevoiceoverstudio.com, where you'll find my specimen collection cup, which mm-hmm. continues to be filled up. Yep. Anyway. By the uh, time you see this, I have a webinar coming the well, I would say, I guess, tomorrow. Uh, the 26th, yeah. yeah. so the, 20, the, tw- the webinar is on the 25th. Uh, I got my Ask Me Anything on Clubhouse on the 26th. Um, and the old VOBS Fan 10 will get you 10% off anything you book through the website. All righty. And we need to thank our sponsors, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And... and- worldvoices.org the industry association of freelance voice talent which you should all join i'll be watching for your names because i know who all of you are (laughs) anyway uh that's going to do it for us this week we're going to be off for a couple of weeks because i have to go to morocco oh man yeah what a bummer and and the canary islands to go visit our good friend ramesh which i am really looking forward to but i'm also looking forward to morocco and madrid and barcelona and all these other yeah, places. Yeah, Spain, that's, that is definitely, can't wait to go Spain, to Spain. Spain's a cool place. Yeah. All righty. Well, look, not an easy business, voiceover. But technologically, we're here to help you out. Mm-hmm. And you'll send us your audio, and we're going to tell you. If it sounds good. It is good. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. See you in a couple of weeks, guys. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Sue. Thank you.